organizational meeting to, uh, to order. Uh, we'll, we will do the, the moment of silence in the right before our town board meeting after this, so we won't do it twice. Uh, so I'm gonna call the meeting to order. I need a motion to establish the position of deputy supervisor for 2022. I'm sorry, I didn't. I'll make, I'll make. John, John Leone, second. I'll second. Second, Charlie Florio, all in favor? Aye. Opposed, carried. Is Kathy on? She was on. Nope, there she is. There she is. Uh, so I'm going to appoint John Drabic, Drabic as deputy supervisor. Um, I need a motion to appoint Robert Fitzsimmons legal counsel for 2022. I'll make that motion. Motion, Charlie Florio. I'll second it. Second, John Leone. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Carried. Uh, I need a motion to appoint Janine Munn and Lori Fenoff as court clerks. For 2022, make the motion. Motion, John Dravick. I second it. Second, Charlie Florio. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Carried. I need a motion to appoint Dan McCormick chairman of the planning board for 2022. I'll make that motion. Motion, John Leone. I'll second it. Second, Kathy Ham. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Carried. I need a motion to appoint Jerry Jennings, Chairman of the Zoning Board of Appeals for 2022. Make the motion. Motion, John Dravick. I'll second. Second, Charlie Florio. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Carried. I need a motion to appoint Vince Conkra and James uh, Dallas as Building Inspectors for 2022 and Code Enforcement Officers as well. I'll make that motion. Motion, Kathy Ham. Okay. Second, John Dravick. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. I need a motion to designate the Register Star as our official newspaper for 2022. A motion. Motion, John Leone. I need a second. Okay. Second, John Dravick. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Carried. I need a motion to appoint Matt Burrell budget officer for 2022. Make the motion. John Drabick. I second. Second, Charlie Florio. All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Uh, I need a motion to appoint Viola Williams town historian. I'll make that motion. Motion, Kathy Ham. Um, along them lines, so Matt, do we have a backup? Because I, I hear I hear her health is not very well. Uh, Alice Angles are backup. Okay. And to be honest with you, Alice does most of the work, but she doesn't want the she doesn't want the position right now. Okay. But she's willing to do the work. Okay. Okay. So is that a second, John? Yes. All right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. I need a motion designating the official depositories for 2022 as Key Bank, Bank of America, TD North Community Bank, and the Bank of Green County um, and Berkshire Bank. I'll make that motion. Motion, Kathy Ham. I'll second it. Second, John Dravick. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Carried. I need a motion to appoint Sandy Novak as solid waste user fee clerk and registrar of vital statistics for 2022. Make that motion. Motion, I'll John second. Leone. I'll second it. Second, Charlie Florio. All in favor? Aye. Opposed, carried. So this, I, I unfortunately I left this off the agenda because last year we didn't have someone to fill the position right away. Um, <laughs> but I need a motion to appoint Terry Scott as the deputy town clerk as well as being the deputy solid waste user fee clerk and the deputy registrar star for vital statistics. Make the motion. Motion, John Drabick. He is second. I'll second it. Second, John Leone, all in favor? Aye. Opposed, carried. 
Um, I mean, Matthew, you, excuse me. Did you want to do the salary on this one or we'll next? Do that the, we'll do that at the board meeting. Okay. Thank you. I need a motion to authorize the supervisor uh, to place funds in the money market accounts in any bank in New York State in order to assure availability of third party custodial collateral for the certificate of deposit investments in 2022. I'll make that motion. Motion, Kathy Ham. Second. Second, Charlie Florio. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. Um, I need a motion authorizing the highway superintendent to purchase salt, sand, gravel, paving materials, gas, diesel, fuel oil, and other available materials from state and county bid contracts for 2022. Make that motion. Motion, John Leone. Second. Second, Charlie Florio. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Carried. I need a motion to provide comprehensive legal representation for the planning board and the ZBA, including prior review of applications, attendance of scheduled meetings, conferences, and advisement to the chairman and the secretary in, for 2022. Make the motion. Motion, John Dravick. A second. Second, Kathy Ham. All in favor? Opposed? I'm not, I'm, I voted yes, but uh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, carry it first. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Carried, okay. Um, just a question on that. Wouldn't they be covered anyway? You know, just like the rest of the board members um, by our legal counsel? Our, our legal counsel, Rob Fitzsimmons does uh, cover our, both our zoning and our planning boards. Right, but, but why separate motion for him for I, I'm just curious why do we have to have separate motion authorizing um legal representation for them isn't it? well in, in some in some towns the town attorney does not represent the planning or zoning boards okay uh, Rob can you explain it even better no you're right Matt like I am the town attorney for the town of Livingston but I am not their planning and zoning attorney and those boards are entitled to counsel and they can be given a separate budget line for it. But uh, it's just easier and simpler if you do it this way and then just authorize the, the attorney for the town to help those boards out as well. It, it's just moving forward, just food for thought for next year. I mean, is that just something we can, we can, I don't know, cause thing so it's covered so we don't do this. That, all our boards are covered by some attorney. Is that something we would do, Matt? Uh, uh, we, we, we could do it, but at the same token, if, Ra, if for some reason, uh, and we had that issue with uh, Rob Stout, that they have a conflict because they're representing someone else, we have to have the authority to go out and hire another attorney. And uh, uh, for example, with the, I believe it was the power lines that were going through. Rob Stout's law firm rep was representing uh, one of the one of those companies, and so he had to recuse himself. Gotcha. I understand. I was, okay. Yeah, I was just questioning. No, that's good. That's fine. Um, next item is a motion to appoint Maggie Banker as our dog control officer for 2022. I'll make that motion. Motion, Kathy Ham. Second. I'll second. Second, Don Leone. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Carry. Just so at the board meeting, uh, I sent you all the, the contract. Uh, it's not her contract. It's a contract to be able to, to house animals. Um, uh, so she wants us to be able to sign that. I told her I thought I told her it was fine. Uh, we still you would use the, the Humane Society, but actually she said this is much cheaper than the Humane Society. So it may save the town money. And Rob, and Rob has reviewed the time. Uh, next, uh, I need a motion to set the mileage rate at 58.5% per mile, five cents per mile for 2022. That's the, uh, the federal IRS rate. Make the motion. Motion, John Drabic. I'll second. Second, second, John Leone. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Just so you know, it went up two and a half cents. So, because of the price of gas. 
<laughs> um, a motion to establish the rates uh, of pay for the 2022 for the highway department employees uh, full-time MEO ranging from $22 an hour to $19 an hour, part-time drivers to get $18.21 per hour and wingmen to get eight, or I'm sorry, $15.80 an hour. And these were the numbers that we had agreed on. Read the uh, first set of numbers. Uh, $22 per hour to $19 an hour. That would be for our three full-time employees by seniority. Um, the highest one being $22, the next one being $21, and then the newest person getting $19 until they get their CDM. Yeah. Okay, and they would go to 20. But we put it in as a range. Uh, I, I, I've already got it to the payroll company with the individual salary, so it's... Okay. So I need, I need a motion to accept that. I make that motion. Motion, John Leone. I second it. Second, Charlie Florio. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Carry. And then next, I need a motion to appoint Richard Belterman as Deputy Highway Superintendent at $2,500 per year. Make in the addition motion. to his salary. So we have a motion from John Dravick. Second, John Leone. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Carried. I need a motion to appoint Eric Paczynski as police chief. I'll make that. I'm sorry. Right. Go no, go ahead, John. No, I'll second it, Kathy. Kathy's got the motion. All right, Kathy's got the motion. Second, John Leone. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Carried. All right, and I need a motion to establish the hourly, hourly rates of pay for 2022 for the police department as $8,600 per year for the chief, which is a 2% increase, just for, for, and then $20.50 per hour for sergeant and $19 per hour for the officers. And again, this was agreed upon by the police committee and the, and the board. So I need a motion. I'll make that motion. Okay. Motion, John Leone. Second. Oh, second. Kathy Ham. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. Thank you. I need a motion to establish the rates for the Planning and Zoning Board members for 2022 of $35 a meeting for members and $45 a meeting for chairs per meeting. I'll make that motion. Motion, Kathy Ham. Second, John Dravick. I could I could see your lips moving, John. Yeah, yeah. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Carried. Uh, I need a motion to set the first Thursday of each month as a uh, as a workshop meeting and the following Tuesday as the town board meeting. Both will commence at 7 p.m. The exceptions will be the January meeting. There will be no workshop and the organizational meeting will be January 4th, 2022. And the board meeting will be the same day at uh, at 7 p.m. The July meeting, which the workshop will be held on Thursday, July 12, 2022 at 6 p.m. And the town board meeting will be the same day at 7 p.m. November meeting the workshop will be held Thursday, November 3rd at 6 p.m. And the town board meeting will be held the same day at 7. Note, due to the pandemic, there will be no workshops until further notice. I mean, I've scheduled them. If you see your actual schedule, I think for the first five or six months of the year, I didn't schedule a workshop meeting. Um, but I, I wanted to put this back in there just in the event that we go back to doing workshops and meetings. But I think it, we've been operating pretty well with just the one meeting. Yeah. So are they gonna be held virtually, do you think? or? Well, the, again, I'm gonna play it by ear. I'm not gonna say we're gonna do, go virtual for six months. I think, you know, the, if the numbers start getting better, you know, by February or March, we'll consider going back in person. But if not, we'll we'll stay virtual. Okay, so I can just put it on the website then, right, Rob? Just monthly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you don't have to post the whole schedule. Yeah. Well, I will initially, but then I'll just put for those okay. months virtually. Thank you. Just, I, I would put a caveat that it's subject to change due to the pandemic. Okay. Okay, and I don't know if everyone know this, but Ray Jerkowski has now left CPL and is now the Public Works Commissioner for the county. 
uh, but we we still need to contract with uh, CPL as a town engineer for 2022. Um, okay. So I, I would need a motion. Uh, it would probably be George Schmidt. So, Thank you. Motion, John Dravick. Second. Um, I have a question on that. Is, yeah. Is this something that that we put out for bid or out for con? How do we? Well, we 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 could, John, and I, that's a discussion I want to have. If we're if we want to go in a different direction, we can. Uh, I just but I think to start the year off, we need to appoint them. It doesn't say we can't we, that we can't change at at any time. How so if we want, if we decide we want to look at some other companies, we can we can do that. I, I well, I, I say we I say we do that um, in light of several several things that have happened over you know that we've dealt with with them um, that I've not been happy with. Um, mm -hmm. So I, I think it's it's time maybe that we look into a different um, engineering firm. Okay. So I mean, Rob, Rob what, what's your? Th yeah, you can do an RFP at any point in time, a request for proposal. It's uh, engineering is a professional service, so you don't even have to do an RFP. You could just canvas and see who you would like to interview and use. But uh, usually, an RFP could be put together. And then you'd solicit engineers' background and their hourly rates for projects. Yeah. Do what, we have I, any, do we have any projects say, that are open that Ray was working on? Uh, the pavilion is still an ongoing project. I mean, it's it's almost done. We we actually got the prices and we paid for the uh, the petitions for the bathrooms. Um, you know the you know the stalls and and things like that. Uh, we haven't gotten them yet, but we paid for them because we wanted to be able to put them towards the grant, which we had to spend the money by the end of this year. So, and I'm, I think we've spent just about everything we needed to spend to get get the full grant. So, uh, but beyond that, you know, other than maybe some advice on, on the pavilion, uh, I mean, the water and sewer, Kathy, is an ongoing project. Right. So what I was what I was going to say, uh, if we were going to look elsewhere for an engineer, I'd like to talk to Joe Myers, who works with different engineers in the different municipality he works in, because we got we've got to have someone who's familiar with water and sewer as well. So, I I agree. Like I said I'm not a, I'm not opposed to you know, as long as we're not tied to for long term. I mean, if this is just we're starting out using them and we still have the opportunity to put out there, you know, as a interview or seek new uh, new engineers for the town, I think it's something we should explore because, like I said, as as I, I feel it was a big mistake on Ray's part when they did not do the lead testing of the paint on the water tower that cost us an extra $285,000. I am mm -hmm. not happy. That, and I think that's something that, as an engineer, he should have picked up on. So, just just my feelings. I don't know how everybody else feels about that. Okay. Um, well, again, I'm sorry. I I got something to bring up under the engineer. Um, the other night I was at a zoning uh, law revision meeting. Um, for the zoning board, and um, we finished up the solar and wind and they told me that they sent they sent it on to Rob and he recommended to send it to the engineer and I was just wondering where we were with that uh Charlie I was in the, I'm in the process of reviewing it but a lot of the solar and the wind has a high highly technical level of language in it Actually, absolutely so uh you know it does need to get reviewed by the engineer and I was going to forward it on if you're using CPL in the short term to George Schmidt uh, okay. for him to take a look at. That's what I was sure getting we, at. Yeah, just so we're not getting running afoul of any technical requirements. Right. So it's still in your hands yet? Yep. Okay. Yep. I told them I'd let them know. Okay. Thank you. So for, so I think we're all in agreement for the short term. 
uh, we'll motion, we'll make a motion to appoint CPL. We don't norm, we don't even sign a contract normally with them. It's just something that we vote on every year and we just continue. Um, so at any point in time, um, we can we can look to move on. And like I said, I want to talk to Joe Myers uh, because one of our biggest uh, our most important things for an engineer is our water and sewer. So what happens if we don't go with that company any longer and something arises from something that was done under Ray? I mean, we, we can't use him for a reference anymore because he's he would be with the county. But we should yeah. everything, everything well, should be finalized. I mean, if, I mean, people move on. I mean, it's just like right. uh, you know when when Rob Stout moved on and we hired Rob Fitzsimmons. Uh, you know, okay. you, you pick up where you left off, and uh, and if there's an issue, we fix it. But right. uh, you know, if we hire another engineering firm, that would be the same thing. Okay. So, sure. so I just I need a motion to appoint CPL um, for town engineers for 2022. And again, that doesn't that doesn't tie us to the whole year of 2022. I made the motion. John Dravick, second. I'll second. Kathy Ham, all in favor? Aye. Uh, opposed? Carried. Um, everybody got a copy of the uh, town board of committee appointments? Yes. I don't have to, you know, um, let me just find it. We can post that, Sandy. Sure. The committee on the appointments. Website, on the website, you mean? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, let's see quickly, just for the record. Uh, highway, water, sewer, buildings, grounds, and capital projects is myself and John Dravick. Town cleanup day is John Leone and John Dravick. Uh, and actually, and Tim, not a, as, as a highway superintendent, but not, not as a member of the town board. Uh, uh, police uh, and control of dogs is Kathy Ham and John Leone. Leone. <laughs> Website, Matt Morell and Kathy Ham. Youth, John Dravick and John, Charlie Florio. Celebrations, Charlie Florio and John Leone. And town board liaisons to the recreation Com committee is John Dravick and Matt Morell. Okay. And did we decide what we're gonna do about, I didn't get a chance, I count home late, I'm sorry. I apologize. Did we decide about the police? Uh, well, I didn't, I, I, we did, I didn't appoint a commissioner tonight. Uh, so, I mean, I, 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 I'll let, let's let let's see how it goes with, with the two of you and meeting John and Kathy and my my involvement as, as supervisor because I'm involved anyways. And uh, we'll just see how it goes. And if we, you know, if it, it doesn't work out, which I, I believe it will work out, we'll, uh, we can make a change at any time. I actually would like, you know, it, maybe after a few months, John and Kathy, maybe just see how it's going. We'll we can talk about it. Okay. Uh, hey, anybody else have any other business <laughs> or organization meeting? Rob, Rob, uh, maybe I'll bring this up. Um, again, with the zoning law uh, revision. Yeah. Um, We've we've went solar and wind so far. We worked on temporary um, storage on properties, and the next thing we're going to is is the big one, which was short term rentals. Uh -huh. and, there, and and this is going to be more as we go into the future. But we found out, like for most towns, the permit fees and fines are done by the town board. So we will have to come up with a system on how to you know because there's a lot of stuff involved with this. Mm -hmm. And I'm just letting you know that'll be coming up to bring it to the board. Well, I, I will say, and I'm not sure, I think it was John Drabick and maybe John Leone worked on permit fees for the building inspectors. Uh, so, I mean, it's doable. We can figure, we can figure that out. And Jim, Jim can help us put and that together. Involved. Yes. yes. Okay. All right. Thank you. No, thank you, Charlie. Anything else before we is, adjourn? Is the county having addressing that too? The fee, well, if you will, you have to 
a fee for the town and the county or just the, the, the county is looking into taxing uh short-term rentals uh and and airbnbs that we're not looking at it doing enforcement but we're looking at taxing so the enforcement would be left up to the towns and or the city or the villages and uh the the the, the occupancy tax which the county would impose uh which we have to get legislation to impose it would almost be like a sales tax and we would get a share of that the towns All right. just like we do the sales tax okay yep all right anything else okay i'm going to adjourn the meeting and at seven o'clock we can reconvene for our town board i thought we have a whole four minutes. We have a whole four minutes. So smoke them if you got them. Oswaldo, can you cut us off for a couple of minutes? Order. Let's take a moment, moment of silence, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America 
and, and to, to the, the Republic, Republic for which it stands, and one, nation, one nation, under God, under God indivisible, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. I'm going to ask for a motion to approve the December year end board meeting minutes. I'll make that motion. Motion, Kathy Hand. Second. 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 Second, Charlie Florio. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Jerry? I need a motion to accept the town clerk's report and with an explanation. Uh, yeah. Sandy, why don't you give the explanation first? Yeah, my um, town clerk report is not going to match up with Jim's report. Um, I went to do the deposit today and I noticed that one of the checks that he had submitted for a shed permit was not signed. So he's going to show one more um, permit that, than I am, and I'll show it on my next month's report. Once, well, once we get the check back. Okay. Thank you. So we need a motion to accept the report as as revised, I guess. <laughs> motion, John Leone. Second. Okay. Second, Charlie Florio. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Carried. Tim Maston, do you want to give the highway department a report? Yep. Um, so we've been out patching some holes, um, working on some of the equipment. We've had a few minor nuisance storms, nothing major. Um, maybe something more significant at the end of the week here. Um, so I, I've uh, gone out and tried to get quotes for the alarm system at the town garage. Um, SNF is the only one that came out and looked and gave us a quote. Their quote is 13,402.98. How much was it? Um, $13,402.98. Thank you. Does that Hopefully we'll get some of these other guys will come around and give us a quote. Uh, um, that's just, just for the fire alarm system. That's all. That's just for a fire alarm system? Yeah, yes. so what we, what we have is outdated and doesn't work. Who do, who do we have the, who, now, do you know? We don't have anything right now. Okay. Um, the, system, I, the system that was that's there was uh, put in originally when the building was built, and it hasn't worked in years. Okay. Do, um, do you know who else you put out a con you know, uh, offers to or whatever? Uh, um, I don't, I don't know off hand right now. Um, it was some outfit from Saratoga, I believe, and another outfit down toward uh, Kingston or Poughkeepsie. Okay, because um, the I'm just throwing this out there. The college we deal with Johnson Controls, um, and I can, I can give you their information. I can contact our rep at the college and have him contact you if that's something you want to explore. Yeah, because we need more quotes. We can't just do this on one one quote, you know. Okay, I'll reach out to him tomorrow. I'll give you your contact information, and hopefully he'll contact. Hey, hey, Tim, have you checked state contract to see if there's any providers? Um, I have not. That you, that might be another resource too. Johnson Control state contract because um, that's the only, the only way we can use. College. Okay. So then you wouldn't have to get two quotes, Tim, if they were on state contract and they were right. reasonable. Yeah. And we and we knew it didn't work all this time. Yeah, we've gotten prices on it before, and it was at the time it was too expensive to repair. Um, I think yeah. it was about eight or ten thousand before, so the price is only going up. So you got to you got to remember, Kathy. We we weren't uh, as well off a few years back. As we are as we are now in terms of uh, money and I, I mean we knew about the problem but we never felt we had the, you know, the ability to be able to to put a system in. So, all right. Um, the other issue we have going on is the budget's going to take a hit right off the bat this year. Is uh, we've got a, a culvert pipe that's collapsed under Royal Road up in Kings Acres. Um. It's 100 feet of pipe. I was able to borrow 100 feet of pipe from the town of Ghent. Um, the pipe I have ordered has not showed up yet. So when that comes in, we'll just replace what we borrowed. But um, 
we've had to run a bigger piece of equipment because it's so deep and the other issues i may have to get some outside help because it's under the sewer i believe and under the water line um, so right now we're about nine or ten feet deep and it may have to go deeper than that um so we're sourcing materials right now we're bringing in stone and and gravel and stuff like that um we're going to try to get this done between storms um with the weather and stuff i don't know um and the road's going to have to be closed at some point um so we'll try to get some notifications out to the people in the area um, it's not a big deal because they can go around either way but it's just an inconvenience for them now this is uh, this is right by Dan McCormick's house. Yes. Yep. Dan McCormick and Joe Carey's. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So the, the the impact is that the it backs up on Dan McCormick's neighbor's land, not his property. Um, so we go up there because it keeps collapsing. So we go up there and dig it out and uh, relieve the water. But. We're going to go up there and instrument tomorrow, take some shots and see if we can figure out anything. Um, but like I said, it's got to be done sooner than later. Yeah. It's just not it's, a good time to do it. Is it because of the age of the, the pipe or? Yes, I believe so. It's, uh, I think that's the original culvert that was put in back in the early 70s. Um, they did some update on it in the early 80s, but I think they just extended the pipe. So the lady that lives across the street from Dan McCormick, um, Monday morning, she had like a six foot hole in her yard, um, six foot round and about eight feet deep. Um, so we knew where we knew we had a problem. We just didn't know where it was in the road or on the edge of the road. It turned out to be on the edge of the road, but like I said, it keeps collapsing now and it's encroaching on the road. So that's what we're focusing our attention on right now so hey kim you think there's any kind of water break there that's going to close that i have no idea um the sewer mains in the middle of the road and the water mains on the other side of the road and we got the main uh the main cable service for the development that runs through there too so it's going to be fun okay tim do you have anything else uh, no, that's about it. I know you and I just talked recently uh, about uh, the whole issue of parking again on the side of the road. Uh, uh, what What is our current uh, uh, town law state? I know it's from November through March. Uh, it's November through March. Um, at certain roads, we have uh, we have uh, put signs up on. We passed the resolutions. Yep. Uh, and I don't know if we can just do a, a townwide resolution for no parking, and then we'll have to post all the roads. Um, but well, it seems to become more and more of an issue every year. Yeah, Matt, well, if, I, if I may, if I may speak here. Sure. If if. What we need to do is if you want us to enforce no parking on roads, there has to be signs on those roads. Otherwise, we have no legal action of acting towards that. We can't enforce something that, say, so say someone's going to visit their grandmother and they park on the side of the road because they don't know, and then their car gets towed or they get a ticket. That's not going to hold up. But if there's signs, then, then that will hold up. So, yeah, most of the most of the problem, most of the places we have problems are are posted. Um, the people park right in front of the signs and don't, you know, I don't know. Um, <laughs> well, what road would that be? Uh, Chester Ave. I just had. Um, Is it posted? Uh, Chester Ave. I was told it wasn't. No, it's posted. There's a sign. Yep, right, buddy. Just up from the cannon there. Um, I drive by it every day. Had a car moved for us. Okay. Um, my my first my first step is I go out and I put a notice on their car, the no parking ordinance and, and stuff like that. Um, but most of the pro most of the places we have problems, those roads and streets are posted. 
Okay, as long as they're posted, then we can't enforce it. But if they're not posted, we can't enforce it. I thought we had an issue with the justices on that part. There was some, yeah, something. Something to do with the something. judges. They were talking, yeah, for the well, something to do with the way way the thing was with the police, so they could ticket the people or something like that. But I don't yeah. know if that ever got sure. either. I I can't remember exactly how it went, but it was something about the just the judges wouldn't honor the tickets or something. They wouldn't. We had to have some kind of records or some kind of difference in our zoning or something. Not zoning, but something in. I forgot exactly how Harold used to say. I think it's a simple well, they were, they were, they town, were, townwide resolution. They, they were they were telling me is that that the streets aren't 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 marked properly. So well, they're out there. So Kings Acres development is posted. Um, Albert Dock Road is posted. Um, oh, they all Adams. posted like no matter what way you go in, they're posted. Yep. So there's no other way of getting in, on around those signs. Wherever you go in, they're posted. Well, except for Chester Ave, if you came around the back way on Chester Ave and headed back toward the county road, it's not posted that way. But well, that, that's, that's no good then. Yeah, well, it's no good then. You have to, it has to be posted on both ends of the road. There is no problem. We'll throw another sign up. Okay, good. Yeah, because I don't want to wake up to five o'clock in the morning. The horns roll. <laughs> you don't like the air horn? <laughs> no. Why not? I'm like, what the heck is that? <laughs> you might wake up your neighbors that don't wake up and move them anyway. I know. I understand. <laughs> Rafa Simmons, I know you, you, you've dealt with this. I know we've talked about it in Belatia. Yeah, I was just, I pulled up your code and you do have chapter 112, which is vehicles and traffic, and it does uh, authorize placing of signs. Uh, what we should probably do is look at the areas where you have regulations and make sure they're in the local law and make sure the local law has a, has a penalty provision. Uh, some judges do have problems with traffic tickets because they, they don't believe they meet the uh, the requirements for due process because when you write a traffic ticket you don't have the owner you just have the license plate in the car but we can come up with a ticket i know greenport does it uh Valencia now does it where the officers would feel comfortable putting enough information into the ticket that it wouldn't become a problem for the judge so it sounds like you got a good start on it maybe you just need to tune it up a little bit but, but if there's areas you want to make no parking or, or seasonal parking it really should be done by a local law and the, the, the other area, the other area that we're having an issue with is uh, right on Route Nine, uh, by right by Bonnie Kipp's house. Cars park on the shoulder all the time, and actually, the DOT told Tim they're waiting for us to want to do something. You have to pass a no parking resolution or something in that area to allow them to put signs up. So we can talk about that. I mean, it's not going to happen overnight, but let's take a look at it. We probably should talk to Tim and DOT again. Really, Matt, if, it's, if this is an issue that you guys want to, if this is an issue you guys want to uh, handle here, what what you can do is just put no parking tollway zone, and never mind the tickets. We'll just tow the car, and they will never park there again. I can guarantee you that. Well, as the highway superintendent, I can have any car towed wherever it is if it's in our well, way then, of plowing. Then tow it. Well, this tell is them. the one we're talking about is on Route Nine, so it's not Tim; it's DOT, state DOT. But, but if you put like on Route Nine where you're talking about, if you put no parking towaway zone, they're not going to park there anymore. You can write all the tickets in the world; they're not going to pay, and they don't care. You tow mm -hmm. their car. Then they're going to have to pay to get it out. They're not going. They'll never do it again. So talking to my contact at the state, he talked to his people, and they can't just go put signs up. They need the town to pass a resolution or something to allow the state to put the signs up because it's on a state road. It's not a town issue. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's difficult from like old Carter up top, optometrist, all the way up to like where Doc Shaw used to be. People yep. have their driveways well, there, and it's hard. I know your brother, your brother's house is impacted by it as well. Yeah. Yep. 
Okay. Uh, I, there's, there was one more thing with the parking that I brought up the last couple of years is in front of the town hall on DA night. You can't even see come yep. out of my there. You're just guessing to get out. And I know a few mm-hmm. people have come and complained to me about it. They worry about yep. their kids pulling out. You just can't see. Well, coming well, down with the cars coming down Atlantic Avenue. One of the ideas there, I actually we we put a committee together, but one of the ideas there was to uh, have no parking signs, like maybe fifteen feet from the corners. That way, right. cars right. That, right. so cars could see when they came out. That would help. So we so should. Uh, and that would be working with the county because it's a county road. Right. Also, I, if we're going to be issuing tickets within the town and make making work, we have to park somewhere. We can't park at, you know, uh, down at the ball field and walk up to the. the that's just not feasible. So, no. you know, so you know, we let let's. I think, like Matt said, we should table it for tonight. You know, maybe get it, uh, some people together, discuss it, and look at what our options are. But um, mm-hmm. you know, let's think this, about this rationally, because again, if we're issuing tickets within the town, and then we and we tell them to come to court, and they have no place to be that night at court, it you know, especially if it's raining, cold, you know, whatever. Yeah, whatever. Mm-hmm. No, I, I agree, John. I think we, you know, we're not going to solve it tonight. It's going to be a longer range view. So. All right, Tim, do you have anything else? No, that's it. Any questions for Tim? No, thank you. Okay. We have uh, our, our chief of police is on. Um, I don't know how you want to do this, uh, Chief. Do you want us to, to uh, make a motion to accept your report, or do you want to talk about your report? No, that's fine. You can make a motion to accept. I only have one thing to add on to the report, because I, I uh, submitted it earlier then. Okay. So I'll, we'll, uh, I'll entertain a motion to accept the police report in written form. I'll make that motion. Motion, John Leone, I'll second. I'll second it. Shelly Florio, all in favor? Uh, opposed? Carried. Okay, Chief. Oh, uh, Maggie did. Re- well, I had one of my officers, Cody, go in and assist her Friday um, morning, and they did remove a dog. Uh, so they that was one. That's one dog call that we had that I didn't mark down on the report. That's what I wanted to add. Okay. And I knew about and that. She's that also was, working. Uh... Go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Chief. She's also working uh, hand in hand with the the Humane Society, so we're not going to be getting charged if the dog gets stored there anymore, as well. She's they entered some they did so she's part of some program. I can get more details on it, but I thought that was nice as well. Well, actually, we it's we've got an agreement that I sent to the board. Uh, it's a sheltering agreement that, with Maggie. So we want to. I want to vote on that so I can sign the agreement. I've told her to go ahead because of that incident you just brought up with the dogs, uh, and, okay. and, the, and the issue being that the dogs were being left out in the in the the cold and in the environment. Just like I don't know if you remember, we had the same house and the same issue last year with the dogs. Last year, yeah, we sure did. And so. our other dog officer would not do anything with it. She uh, called me, and we made arrangements. And she wanted somebody there. Um, we did not have. Did she not want any other anybody else to go there? As far as the sheriff's office or state police, made arrangements. Uh, Cody went in and took care of the situation, and it ended well. Uh, they removed the dog, and that was it. Okay. Good. Yeah. Is there? Uh, do you have anything else, Chief? No, that's it. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Uh, I, I think Joe Myers jumped on, but I'll entertain a motion to accept the water and sewer report in written form. Motion by John Leone, second. John Dravick, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Carried. Joe, do you have anything you need to add? 
Uh, just for Sandy, uh, I don't know if Mike had told you, but he got that water meter installed at 43 Crown. Yes, he did. <clears throat> oh, good, good. And yeah, he's going to let me know. He's going to get the paperwork to me. Yeah, gotcha. I spent a little bit of time with him today uh, on okay. the meter issues. So. Oh, good. Thanks. Oh, yeah, so uh, we'll uh, we'll keep it moving. Okay, Joe. Thank you. I appreciate it. And yes. you, Joe, you and Sandy talked a little bit about the, I believe they're called badger meters that are you they, that Mike wants to install at the water plant. Okay, so those though the meters that we're looking for at the water plants are only for process control. Mm -hmm. So they're not they're not used in the um, in the uh, formulating you know water rates or no, no, is out in the distribution. They're just for facility. Um, process yeah my question joe was um the meter reader we have now reads the water as it it is i believe outgoing of the water plant so is that the ones you're replacing <clears throat> no so it's the well so we have uh, six wells that feed the uh, water plant <clears throat> and we like to keep a handle on what those wells are producing Mm -hmm. So these mag uh, these badger meters are going to be used to monitor the well water coming into the plant. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, I think the ones that are there now are, I'm pretty sure they're measuring the outgoing water, right, from mm -hmm. the plant? Well, we have meters that do that, but the ones that we're looking to replace are the ones on the uh, well, well feed lines to the, uh, okay. to the building. Okay. Yeah, I was just afraid that you wouldn't, you know, that if if you that you realize that it's being measured by um, the Neptune meters, and it, so if it if you put a badger meter in, it wouldn't. Read. Oh yeah, oh yeah, I see what you're saying. Yeah, no, yeah. it's uh, for for um, for what we're monitoring. It, it doesn't. Uh, we read them manually anyway. Oh, okay. So we don't we don't use that Neptune meter reader. Okay. So. Thank you, Joe. You betcha. <laughs> Joe, Joe, do you have anything? I'm sorry. Go ahead. Somebody had a question. <clears throat> question for Joe. Joe, what's the status of the um the trailer? Anything? So we put in a. Uh, we're going to voucher it this month, and uh, hopefully get a check cut, and then we'll be able to go pick it up. It's ready. We okay. just had to figure. We, we weren't quite sure on how to actually do the physical purchase. Mm -hmm. So so we're going to uh, we're, we vouchered the trailer. And uh, once you guys cut a check, we should be free to go uh, go pick the unit up. Okay, and that'll happen sometime this month. You feel? I believe so. Yes. Okay. Okay. And my hope with that, John, and the rest of the board is to be able to use the ARPA money to pay for it. It is for water and sewer, and that's that's an eligible expense. But. So. <laughs> Um, so what was the name of that place? I don't I don't see it on the um on the abstract. What do you what's that, Sandy? I don't Yeah, I don't see it on the abstract. Did you said he put it see what on the abstract? The, I thought he just said he was gonna put the it was gonna be billed. Yeah, I thought, uh, Sandy, I'll have to, I'll have to check that out. It wasn't in our basket. I looked this afternoon, so I assumed that Mike, uh, Mike Laminick had brought it down, because I, I had vouchered it. I had vouchered the, um, the, uh, the uh, quote slash invoice. And I know I believe it was it's, approved. Yeah, I know it was approved. It, yeah, yeah, it was approved. We were just. We had difficulties in trying to determine how to make the physical purchase. Okay. So, I mean, if it, if it was already approved, we could always, I'm assuming Matt just put it through on the, uh, just put it through on a um, abstract and have it just signed it next month. Yeah, meeting. if it was approved in a minute, yeah, we should be fine. Yeah. It, it was approved several months ago. Yeah. In November, I believe it was, Joe. For it was John. November, yeah, because we remember we had a good, Joe had to go back and get a second quote. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah, it's no big deal. I'll see if I might even have uh, a copy of that at work. I can look and see. And if so, then I'll go ahead and put it on the voucher and then put it on an, an abstract and then the board can just sign it next month. 
I feel we're taking the money from the other bond that we had for the water tower. We we can take it either way. We can use ARPA money or we can take it from our, uh, we have money that's uh, that's sitting in the water uh, and both sewer accounts from uh, that we borrowed for capital improvements. Mm -hmm. So we can do we can do either or. <clears throat> and if we did, you know, it would be 70% would be paid for from water, 17% from sewer one and 13% from uh, from King's Acres is the way we would break it out. And we're storing that at the highway? I believe so, or it can be stored at the at the water plant. Water treatment plant. Okay. They have enough land down there. Yeah. All right. Anything else, Joe? Uh, I think that's it for now, Sandy. I'll follow up with you tomorrow. Okay. Uh, in in the event that you don't have that information, I'll bring it down. Okay. Yeah, I might have it at work, Joe. I can uh, check in the morning when I go in. Very good. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Okay. Good Next item, uh, code enforcement officer update in written, in written form. Everybody got a copy of that? Yes. Yep. Uh, I need a motion to accept that report. Make the motion. Motion, John Drabic. Second. I'll second it. Kathy Hamm, all in favor? No. And just remember what Sandy pointed out earlier, there was a discrepancy because one of the checks that the building inspectors collected wasn't signed, so that'll be rectified. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I'll put it on the next report after I get the check. Okay, and uh, an another item uh, after the code enforcement report that isn't on the agenda, which is my fault, uh, at the at the year-end meeting, uh, Sandy had brought up uh, the fact of uh, doing a pay increase per hour for our deputy clerk. Sandy, do you want to embellish on that a little bit? Yeah. Um, as of the present time, Terry, well, she was getting thirteen. I believe it was thirteen seventy nine with the with the raise that went up to fourteen and change. I forget how much. Yeah. Um, so she was pretty much the lowest in um, pay scales. And with other people coming on, um, Terry's been there about a year. The year around the middle of the month. Um, I feel that she should be getting more up to where everybody else is. It's hard to justify why she's at 13, now 14, mm -hmm. when other people are coming in at a higher scale. So uh, I think it's time to raise that. Um, with all due respect, I'm asking that because it's, as you know, it's hard to keep people working. And Terry's doing a lot of pretty much what I'm doing. Um, mm -hmm. She does collect taxes, water, sewer, with some customers. So I feel, um, you know, that she would be good to have a raise to, you know, keep her yep. interested for one and, you know, and just to uh, kind of bring everybody up to scale. So, so we, when, and John, you weren't, weren't able to be there, but the discussion we had was uh, that uh, the newest court clerk that we hired is making $17 an hour. Uh, yeah, who, who just has been there, you know, for a couple of months. No, oh, I, I, I agree. I, we have to. Um, I didn't make the last meeting, uh, as you mm -hmm. just, but um, we did talk about it. You did call me when, uh, when um, uh, you were informed, and mm -hmm. I, I'm along with everybody else in the town yeah. better, uh, yeah. on what they're doing, and um, I agree that she needs a, you know. It's hard to get people, keep people, and, mm -hmm. she, um, and she deserves a raise. I'm all for it. Thank you. Thank you. So, and I believe this will be the, la the last one. Uh, oh. So I would entertain a motion to uh, make uh, Terry's hourly wage $17 an hour uh, for 2022. Make the motion. Motion, John Dravick. I'll second it. Second, John Leone. All in favor? Can, can I just comment on that? I know I know everybody keeps saying I'm Ebenezer Scrooge and everything. Um, I don't have a problem with the raises. I think everybody in the town does a great job, and we're lucky to have whoever we have. It's just, can we sort of keep this kind of stuff once a year? 
you know what I mean? Like budget time is when we should be discussing because it seems like salaries pop out all the time no. and it, it defeats the purpose of a, a it defeats the purpose of a budget. If no, Kathy, if I could, you're absolutely correct. It should be once a year. Uh, it, you know, I don't have a so problem. The, it's just so the circumstances this time around were, were a bit different. And, uh, you know, part of it is because of COVID and because of, uh, you know, uh, and I think COVID uh, sort of uncovered the fact, not that we were hiding anything, but uncovered the fact that some of our people were paid fairly low right, compared right. to what's going on out there. I, so. I, just, I just don't want to have bad feelings for other employees because years ago we used to figure people were retired or part-timers and they had second jobs. So we used to do it one way. And I know we were going back now, we're doing it hourly. Mm -hmm. And I just don't want people to get offended because, you know, somebody, their department head suggests that their employees deserve a raise, which I I agree with. But then if the other, if somebody else's department head doesn't speak mm -hmm. for their employees, I just don't, I think sometimes people, I don't want to get anybody offended if they're not being... Uh -huh you know, thought about yeah. and getting the jumps that some of these people are getting. Not that they don't deserve the jumps. It's just, it makes it fair across the board if we discuss it budget time. I, I think I think we're gonna be fine. We, we gave our highway workers a significant raise. We gave our police a significant raise. We gave our court clerks significant raises, our bookkeeper and our, you know, when I say significant, uh, you know, market rate raises. Market rate, yeah. I mean, we're not, you know, we're they're not getting rich on it, but. Uh, you know, they were they were comparatively low, and like I said, the, the pandemic has sort of uh, sort of shined a light on that. So I think, you know, I think we we did the right thing. Uh, we're gonna we'll be able to keep our employees. They're all doing a good job, uh, or most for the most part, they're doing a good job. And I think, uh, you know, and and we'll deal with it again only at budget time. I agree with you. Hundred uh, percent. You know. We can talk about if, if we got to give our highway guys a raise or, you know, or uh, our police a raise, we'll talk about it budget time. Or we'll, at least it doesn't mean they're going to get the raise, but we'll consider it. I, I agree. I... But again, this was a, this was a different, these were different circumstances. And uh, I think we, we, we did the right thing. Mm -hmm. I agree. We, we just got to make sure all the department heads submit the the budget to our budget for pay raises yeah. move forward with it mm -hmm. i mean these were these were adjustments for stuff yeah. that wasn't that was missed and, and different like you said matt different circumstances these weren't just over, over and above pay raises they were adjustments the last few we've done mm -hmm. because things were missed Mm -hmm. We lost people. Well, they were they were missed. We lost people, but we also, you know, we for for a long time we were trying to keep a lid on our budget because we did have, as some of you remember, we had some serious budget problems early on. Mm -hmm. so. I agree. Okay. But thank God we're not in that position anymore. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. All right. I have one more thing, Matt. Um, okay, Sandy. I spoke to this to you and Rob about this today, I received a call from a lady um, that wanted to know about taxes online. I said, we don't accept taxes on payments online. So she said, well, th that's weird because it's showing on the, um, on the internet that it does. So I said, well, that's strange. We don't do that. So a little while later, she came in and she had on her phone, she had taken, um, if you go to, there's an advertisement at www.doxo.com by plus. And it's, I don't know if you can see this or not, but it's. Uh, you know, I know you sent it to me. Yeah, I sent it to you. But it's, it's showing, it's advertising that people can go through this company to pay um, online their taxes, which we don't accept online payments. So I called Rob and because I don't want people going on this site thinking that they're sending money to us when we're really not getting anything we, and we probably won't. I'm assuming it's just a scam. So I tried to get a hold of um, Columbia County to try to see if they could put a little, you know, a little uh, 
stop on this, but they said they have no way of doing it. And I talked to Rob, and he said the same thing. It appears that somebody's trying to get rich off of taking payments for um, taxes. But So Rob also suggested that putting it on the website, which I did. Um, and I also put it in the paper because I have to file a notice, a legal notice that people have received the tax bills and the tax bills are out there. So if anybody asks you, we do not accept payment online. So just a little FYI. Can I ask? Can you put this, uh, I know it's hard to see, but you sent me yeah. the picture of your phone. Yeah. Can, can we put that on like our Facebook and our website and say, yes, this, it's this on is the a website. Scam. It's, it's on a website already. I will send you something tomorrow um, to put on Facebook. Mm -hmm. And I called the county that's real property because I know they would have a bunch of uh, the clerk's email addresses. And they were going to talk to Suzette to see if she thought it would warrant an email to all the, the um, tax collectors. So so people are aware that this is out there. I mean, maybe it's been out there and I just, you know, never knew it. It was the first time it's been brought to my attention. But um, if anybody asks you, you know, we do not accept online payments. So. Mm -hmm. Do we think that, do we think this is something that merits uh, an ad in the paper as well? I mean, it, it'll be in the paper, John. I I have to file a notice every year, and I added that this to it that we do not accept any online payments. So, uh, Rod, Rod Fitzsimmons. Yeah, Sandy. After we talked, I went on the website that that you gave me, and I dug around a little bit. <clears throat> it appears to be a legitimate third party payer, meaning. Really? Like it's a company or a service you could sign up for, and they will, they have a list of companies that they will pay for you. And they have a low level service that's free. And then you can pay like six bucks a month for a subscription and it comes with identity theft and, you know, it protects your personal information. So it looked legitimate because when I searched the companies, you could pay national grid through it. You could pay spectrum through it. You could pay a lot of different utilities. Some municipalities do take payments from them for their water and sewer. So I don't think, initially I was afraid it was a scam. Yeah. I don't think it is, but I think it's an unnecessary service. Mm -hmm. um, and I think putting it on the website so people know that any service that claims they're going to pay the town of Stockport, the town of Stockport isn't set up to take electronic payments or credit cards. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, if you look at the small print on here, um, it does say DOXO enables secure bill payment on your behalf and is not an affiliate of or endorsed by the town of Stockport, New York. But of course it's small print. So unless you really look, you're not gonna see it. Mm -hmm. My thought okay. was, you know, my thought was that this company or fraudulent, whatever, was gonna take money from people and then we'd never see it and they'd be out some money. That was my concern. Yep. I just right, to well, it sounds like we have a game. It sounds like we have a plan. So yeah. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Um, so do, any, do any of the board members have any questions and comments? Matt, I'm just um, curious. Uh, have we contacted uh, Irwin uh, and got any uh, updates on like, the value of the property? Uh. We sent a letter to the appraiser. I'm not, I haven't heard back. I should. I, I can follow. Actually, I'll follow up with him tonight. I've got his cell number. Okay. But we did send the letter out, right, Sandy? I don't know. I don't remember giving any. This would have been to an appraiser. It was Gus Snyder. Uh, uh, yeah, Rob had sent you a letter to send out to the appraiser. I did not see that. How long ago did you send it, Rob? Probably a month. Yeah, about a month. I, I, I can pull it and resend it to you. Okay. Well, I can look. Maybe it's buried in my email. Who would it, who would it have been from? It would have been from us, the, the town, asking for them to give us an update appraisal on the property. Yeah, but what was the company name? Uh, EAS Appraisals. Sorry about that. I'll still give Gus a call anyways. Okay. You know Gus, right, John? 
Absolutely. Yeah. Rob felt it best that we have the same company that did the initial appraisal do this appraisal because it would be an update. It's not redoing the whole appraisal. So it's not gonna cost us as much. All right. Um, I need a motion to pay the bills. Kathy? If we must. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Uh, before we do that, for those board members, if you can get in and sign the bills. Um, I don't know if anybody's been in yet, but if you have time to, there should be a lot of them. Uh, There's not that many. Don, you'll have to come back and sign one or two more. Don Dravic. I can, are they going to be out tomorrow afternoon? Or, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I can stop um, about quarter after three tomorrow on my way home. Okay. I'll make sure that they're out on the table, John, in the back. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thanks. All righty. So, uh, Charlie, you're on. I make a motion. We adjourn. Second. Second. John, all in favor? Aye. Aye. So, so hopefully uh, soon we won't have to continue to do this, uh, but we'll just play it by ear. And, uh, you know, we had a, we had over a hundred plus cases again today. That's like four days in a row with 100 plus. So it's it's out there. The good news, I guess, is, is that the, the Omicron doesn't appear to be as, uh, as uh, serious as the other variants have been. So it's just more of a common cold, it sounds like. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Yeah, happy New Year. Happy New Year. Take care, everyone. Take care. Take care. Take care. Take care. Take care. Take care. Take care.